So now we can print an integer to the screen, but what if we want to do something like a decimal? So we'll create a float, test float equals 3.7f, and we'll try and print that. So we'll set the cursor position to that, int test float. Now let's see what happens when we try and do this. Now converting a float to an integer will just cut off the decimal part and return just the integer portion. So theoretically it should print 3, but we'll see what happens. And as you can see, it's crashing. Now the reason for this is in the 64-bit mode it requires that the SSE extension is activated. So let's get that running now. So we'll jump back into extendedprogram.asm and we'll create a new function activate SSE return. Now to activate SSE we need to change some bits in the CR0 and CR4 register. Now we need to set the first bit in the CR0 register to 1 and the second bit to 0. So to do that we need to do this. So move rex CR0 and ax 0b 11111101 or ax 0b 00000001 and then move back into CR0 rax which we just changed. So now we've set the bits of the CR0 register correctly. Now we need to change the CR4 register. So we need to do move RX CR4 or AX 0B 11000000. So we're setting the 9th and 10th bit of the CR4 register to 1. And then we just move the value back into CR4. Now before we call start, we need to call activate SSE, and now we'll see if that works. Here we go, so now we've printed 3, so we've created our float, rounded it down to the integer portion, and then printed it. So what if we do test float plus equals 6.3. So this will round it up to 4, and then add 6, so that should be 10, so it should return 10. There we go, 10. So we can now use floats in our operating system. Now this should work with doubles as well. And there we go, so 10. So it works with both floats and doubles. But what if we want to actually display this decimal portion of the float as well? So to do that, we're going to have to go into our textprint.cpp script and create a new float to string function. So let's create that now. So we need our buffer, so float to string output, which is an array of size 128, and constant char star float to float to string float value. Now, um, we need to define how many decimal places that we print, because a floating point can have like many, many, many decimal points, and we don't always want to display all of them, so we'll define uint8 decimal places. Right. Now, the first thing we need to do when displaying a float is we need to print the integer portion. So, that's pretty simple. We can use our integer to string function that we defined earlier. So we can define char star int pointer equals char star integer to string and then the int portion of our value. So that'll calculate the integer portion, and then we can just copy that into our float to string output array. So we'll create a char star float pointer equals float to string output. So that'll just point our pointer to the start of our array. And while the value at int pointer does not equal zero, so we'll just iterate through this array and copy everything into this one. The value at float pointer equals the value at int pointer. Increment int pointer and increment float pointer. So now let's try that and see what that does. So print string float to string and test float. And of course we need to define our decimal points. This won't do anything yet, but we just need to fill in the parameter. 
Now, before I forget, we need to return float to string output. There we go. So now, as you can see, that just returns 10 because our value is 10. So 3.7 should return 3, as you would expect. All right, so let's get on to displaying the decimal portion of our float. So after we copy the integer portion, we need to put a decimal point. So the value at float pointer equals decimal point. Increment float pointer once again. Now we can actually start calculating the decimal point. So we need to do float new value equals value take integer value. So what we're doing is just chopping the integer portion out of our value so that we can just work with the decimal portion. Now we need to make a loop. So for you int 8 i equals 0, i less than our decimal places, i plus plus. Now to get each decimal point, we need to times it by 10 and extract the integer portion like we've been doing. So new value times equal 10. The value at float pointer equals cast to int new value plus 48. So that'll just get the integer and then plus 48 to get the ASCII number. We need to cut the integer portion of new value off again. So we just have the dec decimal portion left. We need to increment float pointer. And then the loop will just keep doing that until we have all our required decimal places. Right, now we need to null terminate our buffer. So the value at float pointer equals zero. Now let's see if that works. As you can see, we have 3.70. Let's try something else, maybe like 672.938. There we go, 672.93. Cutting it down to the two decimal points. Now what if we do like 10 decimal points? Here we go, so 672.937988, etc. And it doesn't display exactly 938000 because of the inaccuracies of floating point values. See, if we hold our mouse over there, it'll display the value exactly, which is very close to what we have represented in our function. Now, but what if we try a negative value? See, just like when we tried to do it with an integer value, we now have lots of junk. So we just need to do a little check if our value is less than zero, our value times equals negative one, which will make it positive. So running that again, it's perfectly represented just as we expect it would be. Now we don't need to check and add the negative sign in our float function because we do it in our integer function and we're borrowing functionality from that to work out the float. So there we go. Now we can use floating points and doubles in our kernel and we can display them on screen as we need them as well. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.